So we're gonna move on to holo metabolism insects. Take a break if you need to. Um, we're gonna talk about caddis flies, dobson flies, aquatic moths, true flies, lace wings, and beetles, okay? So one of my favorite orders is Trichoptera. Um, trico means hairy wing, so they're hairy adult wings. For caddis flies, they're mainly shredders. Some of them are filter feeders, and they're related to moths. You can see they look somewhat moth-like, um, but it's the most species-rich order of aquatic insects. And what's really cool is they can spin silk webs and build silk sleeping bags that then they can attach all kinds of things to for protection. So you can see here's a free living caddis fly with no case, but a lot of them create cases out of, this one's out of leaf material and out of sand and out of other things. Um, caddis fly larvae um, like this one can sing and they can spin webs like spiders underwater. They, um, most of them have a single tarsal claw, which helps to identify them as well. So there's a really cool video that's linked below that shows you how they use this basically double-sided sticky tape that they pull from out underneath their chin to build this silk nest um, or case and attach things to it. And they're very particular about what they use to build their cases out of. Um, this stuff is basically like double-sided sticky tape that works underwater. And so there's a lot of companies trying to figure out how it works. Um, and they will also sometimes just stick other organisms onto their cases. So this guy is mainly built out of little pieces of aquatic plant. He's probably chewed off, but he decided to throw a few freshwater clams on there just for good measure, right? You can also give them materials and they'll build their cases out of whatever you give them. So here's some examples of different types of cases that they make. Only one species makes a spiral case. And I have specimens for you to, to, um, to explore with your microscope of this. It's called helicopsyche. But other organisms will build cases out of sticks and wood and grass and little bits sometimes of moss or algae, uh, rocks, shells, whatever, right? And so if you give them gold flakes, and turquoise, they'll build their cases out of whatever you give them. So there are actually quite a few artists that use caddis flies to make cases and then sell jewelry. Um, and you can see they have an aesthetic sensibility, right? They put all the turquoise ones in a line. Why would they do that? That's not random, right? They, they have a sense of style, I'd say. Here's one that I found in Arizona that had literally just taken these chunks of um, the, the, this leaf and built its case out of it. Like I found the leaf and I found the guy right next door. So basically it was stitching together a quilt for himself. All right, the order Lepidoptera related to the order Trichoptera moths. There are a few moths with aquatic larvae. Lepidos means scales in Greek and it's because adult moths have scaly wings. And most of these aquatic caterpillars feed on aquatic plants. Um, they tend to have five pairs of pro legs, their little sucky legs, just like a caterpillar, right? They're basically little stumps with hooks. They're not jointed articulated legs like the like arthropoda, right? But they're they're called pro legs, little kind of suctions. And here you can see that they they also build cases for themselves. Um, some some species of aquatic moths. One species is actually aquatic as an adult. Here you can see this. So this is the female and it's wingless and it lives underwater. And this is the male and it has wings. I don't know how they mate. I didn't figure that part out. I just learned about this um, from the book. But Accentria ephemerella um, feeds on the Eurasian water milfoil. So it's used as a biocontrol agent to control this noxious weed. So they must come together in some love tryst somewhere um, I just don't know how it works. Something to look up, I guess. Um, moving on to the order Megaloptera. Mega meaning big because of those big wings. Each of those wings is like as big as that guy's finger, right? Huge. They're very large as larvae as well. They have big mandibles. They're definitely predators. But then as adults, even with these giant kind of mandible tusk things, they actually like to um, suck on nectar. So the adults feed on nectar. I don't know why they have those tusks, maybe, maybe to protect themselves um, 
from predators. So we have a lot of aquatic monsters I talked about today. Dragonflies and damselflies and helgramites are major predators. Um, they have these larvae that have extendable lower jaws. Dobs and flies have these giant mandibles as larvae and adults. It's kind of scary, right? So a lot of, I think, um, uh, inspiration for the movies comes from aquatic organisms like these. Moving on to aquatic true flies in the order Diptera. Diptera die for two means they only have two wings. They don't have the normal four wings, um, one pair of wings. Um, and the second pair has been reduced into these little sensing organs called halters. So they help the fly stabilize their flight. The adult mouth parts are often adapted for sucking, sometimes for piercing. I'll show you some pictures of some friends I know you've met before. Um, and the larvae often lack sclerotization. Sometimes they have head capsules, but usually they're just like wormy, like you know, squishy bodies. Maggots, right? These are aquatic maggots we're talking about. Um, the larvae also often lack jointed legs, but some of them have pro legs. So here are some of the most common diptera larvae. We have chironomids, okay? They look like this as larvae and like this as adults. Black flies, really cool. They have these cephalic fans for uh, filter feeding on their heads. Um, this is an adult black fly. You don't want to hang out with these guys. They basically like land on you and then they have these mouth parts like circular saws that cut into your skin, make a little blood bubble and then they lap it up. Okay, really not fun. Um, mosquito larvae, okay. These guys are dangling from the surface tension of the water. They breathe through a respiratory tube that's basically connected to the air, okay? And then they can swim around. As adults, of course, you've probably all been bitten by a mosquito. You've only been bitten by female mosquitoes. Um, female black flies and female mosquitoes need blood meal. A blood, they need a blood meal to produce eggs. The males don't bite. Um, the males are pollinators. And then a crane fly is like a skeeter eater. You know, those big guys that bounce around your ceiling sometimes. Um, this is the adult. As a larvae, they can be huge and squishy and they're really cool. Okay. Um, these are some of nature's vampires. We'll talk about um, some others, but the blood can make for very nutritious meals. The females need blood to make the eggs. Um, giant water bugs are kind of like vampires. They can suck the life out of prey. And, oh yeah, this is where I talked about the Pilgrim at Tinker's Creek. Um, it's a really great, it's a great book if you haven't read it. Um, all right, I'm gonna talk about a few more orders and then we'll be wrapping this up. So the order Neuroptera are the spongiloflies. Neuron means sinew or tendon. Um, and it's because they have this pronounced venation on their wing, very sinew-like. Um, the larvae are wholly aquatic. And when they pupate, they form this really cool kind of net um, structure covering the pupa and protecting it. And then they turn into a spongilla fly. Um, the larvae associate with aquatic sponges, which is why they're called spongilla flies. They're related to lace wings. Um, the order Coleoptera are the beetles. Coleos means sheath. And it's because the outer wing is hardened. They only have one membranous wing, the outer wing um, has turned into what's called an elytra. And when they fly, they open up their outer wings and then they can fly with their inner wings. So you've probably seen a ladybird beetle fly um, like that. They can be predators, grazers, detritivores, and parasites. Um, some of them can walk upside down on the surface tension of water uh, in a lake or pond. And they often pupate on land, but then some return to the water with bubbles of air that they breathe. Um, some are aquatic as adults, like these riffle beetles. Um, and this is a predaceous diving beetle, larva. And then this is the water penny, really cool organisms. They can really stick themselves to the surface of rocks. Some beetles are parasites. This little beetle parasitizes beavers. Okay, so here's Castor canadensis, and they feed on secretions of the castor glands, which are found near the cloaca. Beaver do not have an anus like a normal mammal. They have a cloaca, like a bird. Isn't that weird? 
And so it's not really like an anal gland, but um, these castor glands are really interesting. So these guys feed on the secretions of castor glands, but we use the secretions of castor glands. And anytime you eat something that says it has natural flavoring in it, might be castorium. It's been used as a flavor enhancer, particularly for raspberry and strawberry flavors in particular, you know, uh, specifically. So the raspberry and strawberry flavor, of course, comes from the berry, but the flavor enhancer, it enhances the flavor. Ugh, I don't know, it's a little bit creepy. Anyway, this is platysyphilis, sorry, platyspilus castoris. Um, and it's a very funny looking uh, beetle, it looks kind of like a flea. All right, so that's a lot of the freshwater macroinvertebrates. Um, this is an image, I'm gonna send you um, one of these images, a laminated image. Um, these are illustrations by Claire Miller, who was a student at Evergreen in 2016. She did an awesome job. And we're gonna learn, we learned about some monsters, some vampires. Next week, we'll learn about some zombies. All right, great.